Hello guys, before you enjoy our new episode, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell. Hey, Raleen. Hi. So, how are you really doing? I'm good. I love being in Dubai. It's my first time, so it's been a great one-month holiday. I've extended three times. Mm -hmm. It's a good sign. <laughs> it's a good sign. Uh, I'm still flexible and, you know, rolling with it in life, especially during this pandemic times. Dubai is open, so... I felt like I could afford that, you know. Usually every day there's an agenda, but right now it's like new normal, the new normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're, how are you doing personally? Personally right now, pretty awesome. Oh, really? <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'm thriving. I feel happy in my soul. I feel like my heart is open and I'm sharing energy with the people I meet and expanding my perspectives as well about life now that I'm exposed to the MENA region. Um, never really spent time here and this is my second time uh, in the region and I feel like, my God, there's so much I don't know, you know? And I've met great people, so I'm very happy. Uh, the COVID period, did it play negatively or on you or positively? extremely positive mm. and I know for many people it's very unfortunate and I mean honestly it's been hard especially for the Indonesians because and in Bali now I'm based in Bali basically and for tourism it's really bad and a lot of people around me are not doing very well mm. but I really took the opportunity to just focus on myself and be alone which helped me a lot because uh, all these past few years, I've been building my career. So every day there's an agenda. Every day I'm around people. I finally took the time to just be alone for six months and it was great, yeah. Do you mind being alone or, or you don't mind? No, I actually, I think I needed it. And now I'm embracing it and enjoying it much more. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and how was your childhood? My childhood? My childhood was pretty unique. Um, I'm the eldest daughter and I have two brothers. Um, I come from a quite, my dad's quite conservative Muslim, but very open-minded and very international. So there was kind of like a divide there. And now being in Dubai, I can see like, oh, that's how men are in this region. And my dad, um, I mean, his ancestors were from the Middle East as well. Uh, so I feel like, okay, now it makes sense. You know, how he's always like, but you're a Muslim woman. You know, I never got that because I grew up, you know, always international. I went to international school. I went to boarding school. Um, and I just never got that. It's, we're so open-minded and it was a co-ed school. But then when I get home, my dad's like, no talking on the phone with boys above Maghrib. I'm like, what? <laughs> so there was like all these kind of um, confusions about my identity when I was growing up. But other than that, I always had fun. I was always very active. I couldn't sit still, still the same until now. And a lot of the girls when I, when I was uh, back in boarding school, they were very obsessed with like makeup and fashion. And I was always very sporty because I had two brothers. We always went hunting, diving, trawling, fishing, all this stuff that I don't think a lot of young girls get exposed to. And my godparents were from New Jersey and they're hunters as well. So you, we used to hunt all over the world. Like I, I've been to Africa like maybe eight times by the time I was 11. And that kind of, I think, exposure to, the, to nature, to wilderness, to the concept of survival, I think, made me very different in school and in life with other girls. And I always, I, was, I was always a little bit more tomboy. But now, 
being an actress, I really feel like I want to embrace the makeup and the hair and the fashion and the, you know, just the lighter, lighter, more city, city girl life. Mm. Yeah, and Dubai is perfect for that. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. And uh, your relationship with your parents, how was it when you were young? My relationship with my parents, interesting. When I was young, my mom got married very young. So she got married when she was 21. So it was like we were sisters and we were kind of supporting and we have really good friendships, supporting and raising each other. And she's foreign, she's not Indonesian, she's Singaporean. So she also had to be flexible, adapt. And she went through a lot of up and ups and downs trying to understand the Indonesian culture and how you know, protective my dad was. I think it was a little bit difficult for her. And for me to see that, I wanted to then become someone more independent, have my own income, have uh, and see love as not just being protective, but also giving freedom. Like I, I strive for more freedom because I felt like she yeah, it was tough for her to be able to do her own things. Like, my dad was the man, like alpha male, you know? And with my dad, it was always like me trying to prove to him that I'm good enough, always academically with uh, all this, the activities that we have to do, like hunting and things like that. Because I wasn't a boy, I'm not a boy, obviously. And I have two brothers who are very close in age with me. It was always like, I'm like this little weak thing and I didn't want to be treated like that. Although I was very frail growing up, I was always very skinny and clumsy, but I always wanted to be the tough girl. So two years ago when I was in an action movie, like with M16s and everything like that, I was like, yes, full circle. I proved you wrong, you know, it's fun. I mean, I feel like your childhood really does affect you all your life. And you do have to be conscious and aware of the patterns that don't serve you well and serve the people around you well. And when you realize that everyone has their burdens to carry, and if you are open, you're open hearted, you have to stay vulnerable, share your feelings so that people understand you more. And in my industry, obviously, we use imagination, empathy, and imagination and empathy creates action. So I think to share that, that process of, you know, using your imagination and your empathy to get into character, the more empathy you have in your, in your acting, the more empathy you have in real life as well to understand who you are, not just the other character. Sometimes it's harder to be you than act as another person. Interesting. You know, and then you realize that as you go deeper into acting, that character has so many layers. And then you kind of reflect on your layers like, oh, my God, am I acting right now? You know, like the Raleen at home and the Raleen with you and the Raleen at work. It should be one person. Yeah. But, you know, how many people can say that that's the same person, that you are the same person at home with the people you love? and the people you don't know and strangers. It's very hard. So I strive to be that same person everywhere. And it takes so much more less energy to wake up in the morning because you're just the same person everywhere, unless you have to be in a role. Mm. And I see a lot of people in my industry, a lot of girls, especially it's like, there's someone else with some people, someone else with another person. I feel like that would be heavy to carry. And uh, during my six months of being alone uh, during the pandemic in Bali, um, I did a lot of meditation. I learned a lot of somatic healing. And um, I spent a lot of time just meditating. And I, I realized that, you know, uh, everyone goes through some sort of pain and suffering. And that makes you physically tired and physically less vibrant and um, energetic in the world, you know? Mm. And it also, yeah, being with someone, like if you have a partner, 
that partner can either take a lot of energy from you, like you have to keep up and make them happy and like take so much energy to just make them feel okay in the relationship. And uh, sometimes when I view a relationship like that, I just don't want it. But now I realize as my heart expands and I have more self-awareness, like I want to be with someone who's like growing as well and learning as well so that when we're together, it's not like you're trying to convince them like this is a good thing, but they already know it's a good thing and they flow in their on their path and you flow in their, um, your own path. And it's, it's, uh, it's supposed to be like a heart expanding thing when you're together, like you have more energy, you have more ideas you feel more secure in life you will you feel more safe that you could just jump off a, a plane and do skydiving and all of that because you know someone's there for you you know then then this kind of push and pull that people go through right uh in in dating or whatever and being single this past <laughs> two years actually my friend here alex put me on this single journey she's like you cannot date anyone for the next year like you need to get your shit together yeah. <laughs> because i feel like when i do have someone because i'm so used to nurturing kind of like my mom when i was growing up like mom is gonna be okay whatever i tend to nurture these boys and then they they see me as their mom and they're like who wants to be with their mom <laughs> And I'm like, I want to be your mom. Now I'm like, I just want to be me. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, I do attract like these boys who love their moms, which is fine. I love, I love that people respect their mothers and love their mothers. And um, but that's that's what I realized. So yeah. You got me to think about so many points. So I hope I remember them. The first point that came to mind is you said. Uh, uh, I think the childhood question is so important yeah. because it's, I think adults are just small children, Yeah. but they're boxed in so many different boxes. Yeah. The child is still in one of those very small boxes inside, but there are all of these tough shells uh, yeah. outside. And um, yeah. the funny thing is that is very related to what you said about masks. Yeah. And um, one of the guests I had on the show, her name is Balqis, she's a Marathi singer. Mm -hmm. And she talked about the masks and she said, even if I'm having a really tough time, like I get a very bad message before I go on stage mm -hmm. and I'm crying because maybe a guy broke her heart or it can be anything. She'll put the happy mask on and she'll go, of course, all the audience don't know that she's breaking inside, but you know, that's the mask she has to, to wear, whether it's on an interview or whatever. And I relate more to what you said. I am so me that I don't know how to be somebody else so mm -hmm. I don't struggle with my ident identity so mm -hmm. if you meet me at work or you meet me here or you ask my brother it's kind of the same guy with a bit of um, the, the the dial is just a bit higher or lower yeah I'm maybe sillier with my brothers you know and lamer yeah and it's but, just an ethical thing right yeah. it's just an ethical less masks thing. I think less yeah. masks is more being true to yourself we will all have masks yeah if you put me today in, in front of a, a president i'll be more formal hey how are you, you okay i will not be like hey buddy yeah, yeah it's just ethics, ethics it's basic yeah. things um mm -hmm. but it's interesting your journey is uh, is really interesting um yeah so you would say your mother had it difficult because she had to move from singapore and move her life to indonesia was that the case uh, not just geographically moved, but I think, um, you know, when you when you are with someone, when you get married to someone, you kind of lose your identity as well. And I think she was a very free spirited, young, modern woman in uh, Singapore. And then my my dad, um, you know, she had me straight away. So then she became a mother in a small town. I come from Medan in Sumatra. Uh, it's not a modern city. And uh, she's now become like, an extension of my father instead of being her, you know, mm. so being misses someone. And I saw that and I, I think even until today, I, I really do struggle with um, sharing my personal life if I did have a partner, because I don't want to lose the identity either in a way. I mean, it's hard for 
people in entertainment, like girls in entertainment, for us to really have a full on relationship because it's always going to be about us. You know, it's always like, oh my God, Raleen's boyfriend, you know, even though you don't you don't want that but it's always about you it's just you can't help it that's just the industry and how people will view you and they're nosy and it's sensational you know who's she dating but i guess that's why also raleen a lot of the actors uh, uh, have actresses as partners or singers with they're in the same industry and it makes sense to a certain degree because they know the challenges yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're both busy in similar ways, so maybe they get each other, yeah. I guess. It's maybe difficult to mm -hmm. to marry somebody who's just like a corporate guy. And I'm, look, I think, I've always been with corporate guys. But how did that go? Was it difficult or... They, I mean, I'm not with them now. <laughs> that says something. Know, it's tricky. No, I think I like, um, I like, like structure and order. And I always, I'm very attracted to people who are like more cerebral in their brains and try to understand how they think and I love learning so it ticks my brain a little bit I've never um, been attracted to anyone in my industry because I know that a lot of it is a lot of it is like they're supposed to be good looking they're supposed to be attractive so like every time I'm on a set I try to stay professional I'm like if I like that guy, that just means he's a good actor and he is, he's famous, tons of millions of girls like him. Obviously, there's something attractive about him. So don't like get carried away, you know, mm. it's just hormones or it's just chemicals. I'm like, it's chemicals in three weeks. I won't even see him anymore. So I don't go down that path of, you know, starting relationships in a project. That's against my, that's one of the rules that I just, no bueno, like never, no. Mm. Yeah, it can be yeah. tricky. Yeah, because you have to do then the press junket tour with them. And what if you guys break up <laughs> by the time the movie ends? You're going to have to be with them in every city, every press conference and be like, OK, let's put on our mask, mm. which I cannot do. It's too tiring. It's so, too draining. Yeah, I try to and rationalize as well. You mentioned something interesting. You said, um, I don't like the tug of war kind of relationships, which is extremely common. It's mm -hmm. the battle of egos and mm -hmm. pride and yeah. you should understand me and you should know better. And yeah. why don't you support me? Yeah. I, th I, I, when you were talking, I could imagine a very good car, although I'm not a car guy, <laughs> a very good car. You know, when you add things to the car, it becomes faster or more stable. Yeah. And that's how I, while you were talking, I imagined that you said the person I don't need to convince them that this is good. They already know it's good. But if they come, I become more energetic. If they're in my life, I'm more motivated. Yeah. So I thought of it as a car with extra things on it. And then it's more stable, more fast. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, that yeah. makes sense. Not a car that's missing parts right. that you need to fill the gap. Yeah. And then it becomes unstable. I don't like the he completes me sentence. I don't like it either. That's I where I agree with her that you needed to work on you as a whole, yeah. then you can welcome an addition. But if yeah. you're missing, it's not good to welcome anybody because they're filling a gap. And then once they, you think they filled it and they didn't, you're like, okay, I don't like this person. That's true. I'm disappointed. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, people are still human. They can be additions to the car and optimize the efficiency of the car, like you said. But that's maybe 80%. 20% you have to deal with their shit. At the end of the day, like the person you love, you have to accept them and their shit and they have to accept you and your shit. You know? We're human and humans and are complicated. call each other out on our shit. It's like, you got to work on that. You got to work on that and not just like, you know, just make everything okay. In Asia, I'm Asian and in Indonesia, people are very nice, very nice to the point that it's it's a mask that's permanent. So you try to kind of even when things are not okay, you smile and you say, everything's okay, honey. You know, that's just our culture. It's very Arab too. It's very Arab too. I'm yeah. not sure, but yeah. um, it's not very healthy, you know, to just... I don't think it's healthy at all. I think there's yeah. a big power to the word no. Yeah. And uh, our culture, similarly to Asian cultures, mm -hmm. it's very sure, yes, inshallah, of course, of course we'll do. Nothing is wrong. Everything is fine. Yeah. But not everything is not fine. There's yeah. a huge elephant in the room. 
That's true. And yeah. nobody wants to talk about it. And families don't do that. And couples don't do that. Especially fathers and daughters don't do that, I think. Mm. You know, and to talk about it. But I mean, there's some something called radical honesty as well. And I've met some American friends of mine who practice that in the tech world. And I think I thought that that would be good too. But sometimes radical honesty hurts as well because the truth hurts. But what I believe in is like, tell the truth like how you'd like to hear it. Nice. You know? Yes. So like if someone says, honey, am I fat? You're not going to be like, yo, you got to get to the gym. That doesn't sound nice. Like you wouldn't want to hear that. Mm. I said, well, you know, we could get better clothes as long as you feel happy about it or you are gaining weight, but we are in Dubai and we have been eating for four weeks. Like we'll go to the gym and it'll be fine. You know, yeah. it's okay. You look, you look okay. Yes. You're, you know, like, how would you like to hear it? Try to, to do that to other people. Like, how would you like to be treated? Treat people like that as well. And uh, honestly, I've only realized all this the past maybe two, three years when I started becoming really conscious and meditating and praying and, you know, going through a lot of painful journeys as well. Sometimes pain teaches you faster, quicker, harder than, you know, just beautiful, exper beautiful, fun experiences. I was very immature and quite uh, sheltered growing up. So I'm always like, I, I'm always very careless. And uh, in Indonesian, it's called cuek. I don't really care. I don't know if there's five people in the room. Maybe I'm, I'm listening to my iPod. Those years was like your iPod, right? Your iPod, like I don't even know there's five people in the room or I'm reading a book. Like I, I kind of keep to myself, I'm quite introverted. But the last three years I was like, okay, I'm introverted, but how do I um, carve out time to be the introvert that I need to be and then be the expressive person I need to be in my work? Because that's the only way that the career can advance if I continue to share, you know, not just uh, like what I'm doing in my career, but also how I feel. And I noticed the big shift, like the minute I became more conscious, and I worked on myself more and I spent time on my own. And even the people I meet, the people I appreciate now are different kinds of people that I would appreciate in the past. And uh, energetically as well, I, I feel like the people who come my way now are people I can share energy with. I was surrounded by a lot of energy vampires in the past, just like people who just suck my energy. And I wouldn't even know because I'm such a nurturer. I'm a person that like, I like to nurture people and I think it's not even coming from a good place in the past. It's coming from a place of like trying to distract from my own pain. So I just like help people nurture. But now, you know, I founded a few charities of my own this past three years instead of just volunteering for other people's charities. Um, I do a lot of talks. I, I motivate a lot of children and um, I own a transit home for ill children in Indonesia. Uh, with non-transmissible diseases. So I have like eight centers in the cities. And then I started four years ago this project to help like provinces in the periphery of Indonesia for their education, health, and also their sustainability issues, sustainable for, for development. I work with the government, like the communities. Anyway, these two charities, it's not for me to show off, but these two charities actually helped me um, understand that why I became an actress in the first place <laughs> because I love collaborating with people and the point I was making is actually not the collaborative point the point is the past three years it was really an energy sharing and energy giving and heart expanding experience me doing these charities before when I was volunteering it came from just a place where I needed to add value to my life I was like what is the purpose of life okay I've got to volunteer I've got to help people it's like more to distract me from my own problems. But mm. once I worked on myself, the last three years where it was like, I'm fine. I want to do this because I want to help these people. Not I want to help these people because I need to feel valued. And then I understand myself like I am just this kind of person that likes to collaborate. I want to have value of my life. I want to add value to other people's lives. But it has to come from a place of strength, a place that if I don't have these charities, I'm still me. If I don't have anyone to help, I'm still me, you know? So 
I don't know if this makes sense to it you. Does, absolutely. But when you come from this place of you're doing all these good things from a heart expanding place, then you don't need the thank yous, you don't need the recognition, you don't need that. You're just pleasurable, you're happy doing it, you know. Mm. Even in my work, like it used to take me a lot of time to just be like, okay, it's my scene now, Ugh, you know. Okay, got to work with the director. I don't really like him, you know. But now it's like that guy is so weird. It's gonna be fun. Let's do it, you know. It's like a different perspective. Perspective, yeah. and that's what it is. All it is in this life is just how you see life, mm -hmm. right? It's just how absolutely your stories in your head, the words you say to yourself, whatever happens externally is, of course, it affects you. But if internally you're centered and you have good stories and you're pleasant in your being, then love is just an extension of that pleasantness inside you. You want to because you're so pleasant inside. You just want to make everything pleasant, right? Yeah. But if inside you're empty and the pleasantness is fake and narcissistic, which a lot of the people in my industry are narcissistic. I mean, all of us are a little bit narcissistic. If not, we wouldn't be stars. Right. We must like love ourselves a bit extra. Right. To post those Instagram selfies. Anyway, but the centered feeling, I think, then um, allows us to express from a more authentic place without caring what other people think, because, you know, that 90 percent of the time, whatever happens, you can self-regulate and self-regulation is important. Like your biochemistry self-regulates, but mental self-regulation is important. And spiritually, you have to always connect. For me, I'm Muslim, so I always pray. Like even before I talk, I always pray because in uh, Islam, nawaitu niat uh, in Indonesian is called niat. Intention, yeah. Your intention is important. If you have, you remember your intention. You remember why you're alive. Then that carries you forward in your action. Like I said just now, actors are like imagination, empathy, action, acting. Mm. So then, yeah, the intention. Even in, in uh, acting school, we learn like, what is the objective? What's a big objective for this character? What's a mini objective for the scene? What do you want out of it? And how do you get it, mm. you know? And that's life also. Life is like this big movie. And honestly, like my life, right now and just being in Dubai, all the stories, you cannot believe <laughs> what me and Alexandra, um, my friend who works with me, like what we've been through and what kind of experiences we, we feel inside, but also like outside, it's like, what? I mean, it's our first time in Dubai and we've met like the most incredible, mind-opening, successful people doing great things in the world and we didn't even try, you know. So yeah. Alhamdulillah and um, yeah, I'm glad to be here with you today. Same. Uh, acting question. Mm -hmm. I read in my research yesterday that when you decided to be an actress, you told your dad and your dad uh, <laughs> said that acting is like prostitution. Oh no, you didn't say that. Did you uh. say that or a uh, misquote? No, so he said, like, you want to be an actress? So you want to be a prostitute? <laughs> so I said, what do you mean? He's like, well, um, there's a lot of, you know, actresses who do that on the side, right? Really? Um, that's what he, asked, he told me. And I said, how do you know that, Dad? That's a very interesting fact. How do you know that? Um, he said, well, it's, it's I want to... I want to reframe that statement. It's just because girls in entertainment in a country like Indonesia, a developing country, there's not many of us who actually make it to that level that we can self-sustain ourselves, mm. have a good income and maintain our integrity to the, and then still be um, able to be as fashionable and live the high life. There's always, you know, people in entertainment who want to have the high life, who want to wear the latest clothes and everything, but don't have the career to be able to back that up. And then, um, you know, unfortunately, there's some, some ladies who, who do become the mistress or 
who uh, have extramarital relations with some people, but I don't think, I mean, I think everyone is valuable. Everyone has their own journey. Everyone has their own pain and everyone's a good person. It's just people make their choices and it re reflects badly on the whole industry and all the girls in the industry, which is why I keep on telling girls, like saying no is really important, especially when you're a public figure, especially when you're an actress, because it reflects on all of us as actresses, mm. all of us as Indonesian actresses, American actresses, like please make your craft the thing because this lifestyle is, of course the high life looks interesting. Of course it's comfortable and fun, but I think it's more rewarding when it comes from a play place of self-sustenance and you know, it's, you are what you're talking about. There's a lot of frou-frou, right? I mean, you know, this it's very is very tricky. I mean, I understand, uh, and I know this is not uh, an Asian thing only. Across mm -hmm. the world, models or actresses or people who are trying to make it in any of the arts, mm -hmm. even singing, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of peer pressure and there's a lot of offers. Mm -hmm. You know, the guys who want to take you out or the guys who want to buy you something or the guys who want to glamour you because they want to feed their ego and say, you know, I went out with that actress and I went out with this singer and I had a relationship with this one. So you get all of these uh, starving egos mm -hmm. that want to prey on somebody who's trying to make it. And now the somebody who's trying to make it mm -hmm. is so desperate to live, like you said, the high life or sustain because that's what social media mm -hmm. dictates. That's what the peer pressure is. So how exactly. do I do that? And I'm still not even there. Yeah. Or let's say my industry doesn't pay well for models. Yeah. What do exactly. I do? It's, uh, you can't judge them. You can't judge anybody. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was t trying to tell my dad. So I guess I come from a background of um, people in my family. They're in business and uh, politics. So I think they don't view uh, acting and entertainment as a serious career. I think I'm the first person in my family to be in entertainment ever. Hmm. Which is why my dad was like, you want to be an entertainment? You know, we don't have it in our blood. That was his exact words, not the prostitute thing. He said, we don't have it in our blood. We have it in our blood to be politicians, business people, you know, nice wives of good husbands. That's what he said, which is what I dream of for you to be a good mom. We don't have it in our blood to be on this on stage singing and this and that. So when he said that, I, I realized that I needed to to also show him that actually women have to be given the right to, you know, be respected with any career choice they, they decide to take on, you know? Mm. And entertainment could be as serious as being a politician. It depends on your level of involvement in that career you choose. It doesn't depend on the career you choose. And sometimes more influential. Exactly. So for example, um, uh, fame, Mm -hmm. with all the like music is a universal language acting can be mm -hmm. sports that's mm -hmm. why you see a Messi or a Cristiano Ronaldo and mm -hmm. then what do you do with that fame is what counts mm -hmm. so maybe some politicians don't even have the fame so their mm -hmm. level of influence is limited to a small city yeah but maybe an actress can come and say this is my charity mm -hmm. I am famous but I'm going to use my fame to do mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. and suddenly you're more influential and beneficial to humanity than a politician that's true and i think i'm semi living that exact life you're saying and i said just now the charity that i'm helping those uh, areas in indonesia it's called the era tigate so uh, tertinggal terdalam dan ter, uh, tertinggal terdepan dan i could never yeah. say your well, anyway three uh, three so t it's called it's like underdeveloped also on the periphery yeah. also not prioritized by the government with me being an actress I'm able to kind of have this, well, power to be able to talk to the government, talk to the Indonesian army, to collaborate on different, you know, with different spheres and different bubbles so of people to get together to, to fulfill my intentions. I just tell them, this is what I intend. And guess what? Because I'm famous, you're also going to be famous for helping me out. So you want to, like, let's be friends, let's do this. And most people are actually really happy to do it. Mm. especially the government they're so happy to do it i mean i think now communities are even more getting more stronger and more powerful than governments because now we have social media we communicate 
easily through WhatsApp, the internet, everything. It's not like the days gone by. Mm. And we already know that the people above, it's very rare to find individuals who really care about the vulnerable, the people who are disadvantaged in, in society economically. It's very rare. I mean, in UAE, I see it. I see the love of like the royals, the government towards their people and towards immigrants that come here. I really see it. But in Indonesia and the places I'm exposed to, they're more, I mean, most of their time is just like, how do we win the next election, you know? And that, I think that's worrying for, for, for just the masses. And I think like actors and people in the arts who are supposed to be empathetic and have this imagination and be able to express and like kind of grab love from everywhere. We're supposed to be grabbing that love and sharing it, right? That's the concept in my head. And I think the more that I become more me and do that, I think more people are also like more actresses are actually like, oh, what are you doing? Can I help you out? Like, oh, I'd love to donate this. And I just had a talk two days ago as a, as a speaker a uh, contributor to the Bank of Indonesia with this woman that's like my idol of all time. And that was like, oh my God, I'm here. You know, like two days ago, I had to wake up at 5 a.m. to talk to these women about women empowerment. And I was on the same kind of Zoom as this woman who won the Olympics in Indonesia, won the World Olympics number one badminton player. Susie Susanti, I was like, people, me and her in like what life would we be talking on the same level and she actually knows i exist what i do i'm like what this is crazy i haven't even practiced half as hard as her like spent that much time on my craft skill and craft you know and then i realized oh there is a place for there's a place for everyone you cannot like compare yourself to another person there's a place for everyone so mm. Yeah. What does love mean to you? Love means love means life, you know. Life is love. We're created out of love, no? Some people are, some people not. I think everyone's created by love. You think? But yeah. I think even I'll, I'll bring a very harsh example. A child can be born out of rape. How is that love? Well, that's true. Wow. <laughs> That's true. But you know what? The child can grow with love. It can. And uh, I don't know. In my belief, in my faith, I believe that everything happens. In Indonesian sense, everything happens with the izin of Allah. Everything happens with Allah's permission, so. with the universal permission. Hmm. So that was permitted to happen. And how do you make meaning out of that child's life then? Yeah. You know? I mean, of course, you want to avoid rape ever happening, which is why the Me Too thing now is happening. And it's, uh, you know, people have to really be responsible, especially men, to know like the limits of, of you know, sexual harassment, sexual harassment on a woman. But yeah. if that had to happen, it could still be love. That, that child could still, you know, create more energy of love in the world. Maybe the parents of the girl could take, raise that son up. She could love the son. That son could understand what it means to be a child from that kind of abuse and make meaning out of his life to stop that happening to other children. Yeah, there are, there are actual stories about that. Yeah. I wouldn't say all of them are good uh, stories. Of course, mm -hmm. some are not. But some people will use that pain or that poison and, and change it into a medicine. So what is love for you? Ah, you're switching it now? <laughs> yeah, because you're like, what is love? That's not love. So what's love for you? No, I didn't say that's not love. I mean... You said that life is love and everything is created out of love. So, I said, I so just yeah, that's true. That that's one. true. So what's love for you, AB? <laughs> <laughs> um, love is me, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You know. For me, I think um, love... I had a very interesting answer to this in an interview and it was nice to hear the guy say it mm -hmm. when I asked him this question. Mm -hmm. He said, usually people love something about somebody. So let's say a guy is, uh, is drunk on the beauty of mm -hmm. his uh, partner. He loves her beauty. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. The question is, what happens if the beauty goes, she gets in an accident, so he stops to love her? Then he just loved her for her beauty. Mm-hmm. So then he said, if you really want to love somebody, you have to love their soul. Yeah. Like the beauty, you'll get used to. My mm-hmm. mother always said, the beauty is the first thing you'll get used to. Mm-hmm. And it's so true. It's like buying a new thing, car or bag or whatever. In the beginning, you're like, oh, I'll clean it. Oh, don't touch. But after a month, you're like, <laughs> So you get beauty you get used to and I really believe that but can you really I think love is so underrated and and the word is so diluted yeah like everybody's like love you love you babe love you and I don't like that I feel love is so beautiful and heavy it's a rich word it's yeah. a beautiful word and I should when you tell somebody I love you they 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 should feel it in their bone yeah not just like love you love yeah, you, love you, you can't love, love like I love ice cream, I love this, yeah, you're kind of diluting it. But to answer you, I think it's really trying to love somebody for their essence, yeah, for for their soul. Uh, Good, bad, it's maybe cheesy to say, but it's not easy to achieve. Yeah. But it has to be bigger than just their beauty. The manners come together and Mm -hmm. I don't know. So love, you're you're thinking of loving someone, though. That's your concept of love, though. Through what you're no, saying. No, th- that if we talk about loving somebody. But love in general, I think it's very close to your answer. I think life is a lot about love. I think yeah. love is a love towards love is a spiritual journey because love is the highest vibration on on consciousness, you know. On the lower levels it's like shame, guilt, fear. And love is here above like happiness and everything. So it's like and then that's where you're supposed to, that's the level of vibration of all our prophets, Muhammad, um, Jesus, Buddha, they're all vibrating on this level of love. You don't, and love is a vibration. It's not our bodies, not our minds. It's not even action, it's vibration. And if you operate on that vibration, then your body will act towards things that are loving, things that you feel are aligned to you, you know? Mm. And alignment, to get aligned, it hurts, right? You have to say no to a lot of people. You have to follow your gut. Sometimes this opportunity is so good money-wise, but then it's not aligned. And then you're like, okay, should I this time just be a little bit misaligned so I can, you know, get Mm. this check? Is it worth it? Is it going to make you sleep better at night? Are you going to feel guilty? Or can you just operate on the level of love to see that, well, that's not love for me, so no. That's not love for me, no. And then you just find like, oh, I love this. Okay, I'm going to stick with this. And then you just get more aligned. So love is actually a vibration. If you can kind of stay with it most of the time, it will bring you to a good place. Even when bad things happen to you, you're going to, it's like Amori Fati, you know, Nisha said, like, love your fate. Mm. Like, love your fate, right? And yeah. that's what being Muslim is, actually. Islam means peace. So being peace with whatever God has given you and having peace with the situation that's presented towards you and having peace in yourself, like, as your person. Yeah. So I see, like, every person as an egg. That's how I see them. So the outer layer is their mask, mm. you know? the hypocrite, the, just the mask, how they protect themselves, their egos and stuff like that. And then there's the middle, which is all their hurt and their pain that they carry with them. That's why they had to develop that shell so they can protect and not have to feel that. And then the yoke in the middle, which is like this playful, beautiful child, loving, you know, surrounded by this pain and then having that shell. And then as you grow spiritually or more mentally aware or conscious, you kind of break that shell and let the pain out and share it or be more vulnerable, work on yourself, meditate, whatever you need to do to kind of let this shine through most of the time. Then have this hard shell and have all this pain. So how do you release uh, the pain and the suffering? Because as you grow up, you do tend to create these... uh, realities in your head or you tend to create defenses so that you don't have to feel that pain and then so that playful side of you that trusting loving beautiful shining soul 
sometimes gets covered by all this. And in entertainment, it's very easy to be like a very hard egg, you know, because sometimes your personal branding is that facade. So basically the shell, the outer shell, I call it the facade, and then the pain body or the hurt. And then the yoke is like the child. Mini AB and Mini Raleen, you know, when we were kids and yeah. we didn't really care. And as you grow older, actually, you become and more empowered. You become more yourself as when you were like a child, right? Mm -hmm. Like what you liked before and you don't really care what you, you say. I, I feel like you're at that level where you can just be you. And yeah, alhamdulillah. I believe so. Yeah. I think in the beginning of my career also, I didn't feel comfortable. Uh, being that egg you know because people would be like are you serious right now <laughs> like this is you and now i'm like yeah i am goofy and i if you don't like it that's fine this i think it's age also age makes you more confident mm -hmm. with who you are you're more at peace with it i think if you worked on it because good things take time i don't yeah. think you suddenly are confident i don't think you're suddenly at peace so it takes time. Time means years. No, or I've months. met some overconfident young people. <laughs> but is the overconfident even good? No, I think confidence, I don't think it's years though. I don't think it's age. It's like a maturity. Hmm. It's when you kind of evaluate or make meaning out of the experiences you go through, you actually develop maturity and smarts. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know some people who are much older than me who are like... Very mature very mature absolutely and I, I get so surprised and i you know i've met some people who are like a decade younger than me like a millennial wouldn't think anything of them and then you start talking to them you're like wow you know i think the tricky thing about maturity is though is that maturity is departments so mm -hmm. i could talk to somebody and they're very mature in life but very mm -hmm. immature as a husband or a boyfriend to his partner right. like a child he has full ego there but at work for example he's wow so it's departments. Mm -hmm. Now, if most of your departments are mature, then you're generally a mature departments. person. Departments. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. think it's one. Like you, like you said, for example, if you think of guys you've met or you thought they might be, they were so um, impressive to you, mm -hmm. like super mature, sophisticated, yeah. educated, well-traveled. But then in relationships, he's like a little boy and you're like, that mature guy that I just dated, how is he like a little boy? He's over jealous, he's insecure, but I thought he was not different departments okay so like different facets of their life they mm. react differently and i'll make yeah. it even simpler i we had a footballer in an event who on the field mm -hmm. his confidence is definitely 100 mm percent -hmm. they asked him to come and give a speech in front of people like 100 people he was shivering so his confidence on the football pitch is full on stage is like five. Oh. Like my confidence in the kitchen, <laughs> zero. <laughs> you see? <laughs> okay, yeah, I get that. Have you, um, Raleen, have you been in love? Yeah, of course. I mean, not of course, but yes. I think it was love. I don't know. What do you think it was? I think it was love, yeah. I think, you know, I made a lot of mistakes in my life. I think most of them were when was when I was in love. Because it's emotions. Yeah. Emotions can make stupid mistakes. Suddenly yeah. you buy a car and then you're like, shit, I don't have the money. Emotions. Well, I've never been in that situation. But Are you impulsive though? I'm impulsive about a lot of things, but I don't think um, it's, uh, it's to do with love. I'm very careful with falling in love and building a relationship. In fact, it's very hard for me to attach and open up. I mean, I, I'm friendly, I'm a friendly person, but to get like romantic or intimate, I'm always like, no, it's okay, let's stay friends. Let's just like <laughs> friend zone this thing, you know? Shell. Yeah, yeah shell, not, not shell, but it's just the yellow me, it's just not romantic. It's just like, ah, you know? But why, why is that romantic? Why does romantic have one language? Romantic doesn't have one language. It can be goofy. Line could be pranking each no, other. No, no, no. I mean, of course. I. That's why I said, I, like, I have been in love. But I I don't know if it was a good decision or a bad decision. If you have to think about it, it's probably bad. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No. I've, all my 
all the people I've gotten to know on a deeper level have been very actually life changing for me, all of them. And I, I only have like a handful, mm-hmm. like life changing and they're brilliant people. I have nothing, absolutely nothing bad to say about them because the truth is like, I'm also very difficult, you know? So, mm-hmm. I mean, people can be cool when you're dealing with them on the surface. like surface level, yeah. but when you're with them like every day, I haven't had got, I haven't gotten bad reviews though. If there was an Uber rating on me <laughs> in a relationship, I'm sure it would all be five star. <laughs> But with men, it's very hard sometimes when you're too easy and you're too like, okay, babe, it's okay. You're too forgiving. They're like, take you for granted, right? I think humans take each other for granted when you're too... For sure. I don't like maybe not the word easy. When you're too easygoing, maybe that's a better word. Yeah. When you're too easygoing, unfortunately, even with the team members, Mm -hmm. if you're always, yeah, of course, whatever you want. Yeah, sure. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, okay. They'll step on you. It's human nature. You do it with a child. Any chocolate you want, of course, have chocolate, have kinder, have this, have whatever. Mm -hmm. He's not going to take advantage. Actually, children uh, see boundaries as love. So actually... Interesting. yeah, Yeah, I read that somewhere. Like when you give them boundaries and when you give them rules, they feel more loved and they understand it better than when you don't give them boundaries and then you get mad for no reason. Wow. It's just like adults, like us. If our partner, if our someone we're dating just tells them, look, I don't like people being late. So if you're late, please tell me in advance. Then you feel like, wow, she respects me enough or loves me enough, loves me enough, cares about me enough to tell me what will hurt her, what will, you know, make her happy. So I'm going to do it. So I think it's all about setting boundaries also, right? Boundaries are so important. Boundaries are so important. There's an, and when you were talking about honesty, you said radical honesty. Yeah. I also believe um, honesty is an art. And there's a big difference between being honest and being rude. People are like, no, at least I was honest. No, you were rude. Yeah, that's why I said, like, say it it. the way you'd like to hear it. You could say it in so many nice ways. There's all sorts of art. Even now I'm learning the art of giving as well. Sometimes you give something so inappropriate. People are like, this is too much. Or you give something and people, people don't understand it. Like, you have to... Give something that that person will appreciate, use, and see as love. Other, not see it as like bribery or trying to make that mm. person like you or whatever. Huh. You know, like, will this person really appreciate this? And then you have to give it within the context of the thing too. When you give someone something like, I'm giving this to you because it's your birthday. I'm giving it to you this because we... Um, you know, celebrated the success of our movie and we did mm. that together and I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. If you start like just dumping yeah. gifts onto someone and you know, me being an actress, obviously guys who like me are like love bombing me like crazy, like send her this, send her this. I'm like, what is this? You know, you're like, why is he trying so hard for me to like him? Like, why does he have to give me so many gifts? Just like, just tell me a joke. Yeah, it just make me laugh, you know. Yeah. But uh, it's so hard to make me laugh. What is something that you learned about Raleen from your last relationship? <sighs> that Raleen never gives up. That's what I learned. So you didn't break up? They broke up with you? I mean, I really did not give up. Even after we broke up, I was like, oh my God, he's just going through a thing. You know, I'm going to keep in touch and I'm going to, you know, just help him even more and it's like, no, it's over. It's dead. It's like a dead flower. The flower is wilted. You cannot like wish it back alive. I'm doing it's... This, the, and I'm like, the... no, no, please. please. <laughs> yes. I mean, not not desperate like that. You can still keep it my cool. It's a very like but classy thing like this. There's like, I don't need you, but you know, you should do this. Or yeah. like, no, it was a tough, it was a tough breakup, the last one, because it was sudden, it was fast. And it has so many people involved. It was just so complicated. And I realized that some people are just not compatible. Mm. But another thing I realized, like I said, I just never give up because I believe in love. I believe with understanding, with uh, a curiosity, with the willingness to be involved and to understand the person even more, there is a potential to continue. 
but guys are not like that. Guys are like, screw this. <laughs> you know, like, man, like, I, no, you know. I read and, something so cool. I'm going to tell you. Yeah. I think you'll like it too. It's, uh, I need to get this right. It said, rejection has nothing to do with worth. It has to do with incompatibility. Mm. And I love that. Because people associate worth. He left me, then she feels unworthy. Mm. Or this guy cheated on me and you feel unworthy. It has nothing to do with worth. It's an incompatible work relation or love relation. It's incompatibility. He let me go. No, because you're not incompatible in the company. That's why they let you go. It's nothing to do with your worth. Your worth has to stay. Yeah. This that's really that's really good. It's Thank a nice you. One, yeah? <laughs> I no, liked yeah. it when I read this. Not mine, but yeah. Yeah. I I I think I grew up seeing a lot of incompatible people still stay together. That's the truth. Maybe that's, yeah, why, that's why I learned. they're miserable usually. Well, Maybe not a hundred percent of the time. There's always pleasant. No absolutes, yeah. But yeah, I think to tell you the truth, that's true. Maybe we just need to accept that you're just incompatible, right? And it's okay. It's okay. Or it's not okay and you get over it. And you move on. Next one. Okay. Hypothetical one. Okay. If you could see a number above everybody's head. Okay? Imagine that. And that number represents something. Sense of humor, status, wealth, loyalty, whatever, honesty. What would it you, you choose it to be? Integrity. Hello. Mm-hmm. First time I hear that. I like it. Okay. What makes you feel valuable? When, um, what makes me feel valuable? When I can make someone feel lighter about life because I exist. A bit yeah. lighter, like, oh, she's there. It's good. It's nice. Yeah. Favorite color and three reasons why? I think black. Three reasons why? Well, black is chic, <laughs> number one. Okay. Number two, it, it's also a combination of all the colors mm. in the spectrum. So, in essence, is everything. And then third is, I wear black because I feel like there's a funeral every day to the way you are. Like, life changes all the time. Like, in uh, Hindu Hinduism, they believe in anika. Like, everything that is conditional will change. Hmm. So, it reminds you that, you know, every there is a death to everything. You know, your Ever youth. Changing your career and every day there's some death but also with funeral some funerals are fun and you look good wearing black so yeah four reasons five reasons three okay. reasons but chic is number one yeah um favorite animal and three reasons why <laughs> I have so many animals though i have to choose one yeah the one that edges it for you if you had to choose one i think dolphins Three reasons. Well, first of all, I'm Pisces, so I like anything to do with oceans, so dolphins. I'm also a mammal, so I guess. I think dolphins are very sensitive creatures and mm. uh, they like community. They're, I don't know, they just look good. I don't know why. That's, that's three. <laughs> They're so. fun and I mean, I, it's always also a, a uh, they say it's like good fortune, good luck when you see a dolphin. So mm-hmm. I want to be lucky in my life. So that's, I guess, the fourth reason. Okay, so the color is how you see yourself. Chic, ever-changing, and it's the combination of everything. Okay. The dolphin is an ideal partner. So funny, community, reflects you and your sign. And you said also, uh, what was it? You said it reminds you of the ocean. Yeah. So the ocean one, you can you have to think, why do you like the ocean? That's mm-hmm. what answer it. But you gave me more than three. Okay. So these are interesting questions that usually are kind of accurate, actually. I like the numbers question. Mm. Uh, Did anyone ever like say something integrity, really? No. Cre- integrity, no. Okay. But something creative, you mean? Or so, cre- not creative, no. something shallow like beauty no. or not uh, yet. wealth or something. 
something that would be not crazy. yet i would love to hear that if it's their honest opinion yeah if they actually think they want to see status or yeah. what so be it yeah um best moment in your life so far well here being in dubai really, really? yeah because i got to connect with my friend who's also my business partner and we've been like traveling all over the world these past two three years but it's always been like with a lot of people but it's time we really just stuck together and met awesome people and been through all these experiences in dubai and within the emirates we've been everywhere omal mm. gawain we've been to um, abu dhabi beautiful where else um, you said Alain earlier. Alain, yeah. Mm. And then we've done, seen animals, fed animals, been around um, just the locals, you know. And then so, so many different experiences outdoors, on a boat, in the sky, yeah. in the ocean. It's yeah. crazy. It's, it's been a great moment, definitely. I mean, I know people are still... Um, feeling the effects of the COVID and still going through the pandemic. But I think if you take the vaccine or <laughs> if you believe in immunity, which I do, and taking care of your own health, then you can still, you can still have fun. Mm. Yeah, you can still have fun. I have a random one. How hard is your eggshell? My eggshell? I mean... I'm kind of poking a lot of holes through it lately. Mm. And uh, I actually have decided to kind of work on it either daily. I have a practice and then weekly also. I believe in coaching a lot, not necessarily therapy in a Western sense, uh, but like somatic healing, like healing yourself, feeling, okay, how does this issue feel in my body? So then finding out ways to release it through meditation or prayer. There's a lot of things you can do and read up on nowadays. Huh. Yeah, and there's just no excuse. I feel like now what really turns me on is like a guy that works on himself. Mm. You know, before it's like, oh, what hobbies do you have? Okay, cool. You drive a nice car. All right. But now it's like, does this person, is this person conscious does he read does he read does he care about his family does he care about himself does he question the way he operates does he see me more than you know just i mean it's very easy it's very easy for someone to just be like oh yeah i like this actress she's hot you know but i want people to like me for the reasons i like myself and when a guy sees like oh actually I like this about her and it's like, oh, that's why I like me as well. Good. Nice. Yeah. Not just like, you know how it is. It's Absolutely. entertainment. So, mm. but I think everyone in entertainment has to have their own shell in a way because the shells are also what makes us it can be useful. interesting. Of course. If everyone was just real all the time, where's the entertainment value? You know, it's going to be boring. I think the shells and the pain is also what makes someone interesting. If everyone was just happy go lucky. And actually, I feel like now that I'm older, negative feelings are also good to have. People always associate like only happiness, contentment, beauty with, mm. with good. I think sometimes it's good to be sad also. Yeah, some people write the best songs when they're sad. And yeah. I was thinking about this recently, the idea of contrast. Mm -hmm. You need both contrast to make something valuable. Right. So you need sadness to really feel the good times. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, last year was so difficult. Now I appreciate everything. Yeah. If you didn't go through that, you wouldn't appreciate everything. Yeah. So the contrast is so important. Otherwise, it's like you said, if you're always happy, are you actually always happy or is that normal? Because you didn't see the other side. Yeah. No, definitely. And I think with every catastrophe, when you're just knocked down, you also then realize when you get back up how resourceful you can be hmm. and then you learn more about your resources and you become stronger because then you're like oh these are my friends these are my real friends they were there for me when i was down or like i actually am very resourceful i actually have this good thing about me you learn good things about yourself as well when you're down so, you know when you're always up it's harder to take the time to be with yourself and self-reflect and the friends you attract are also not necessarily the friends that would be there when you don't 
you're not having a good time, you know? Correct. Party mode, you're always going to have interesting people. But like low mode, you'll have people you can rely on. Correct. And the truth is, in entertainment, you need people you can rely on. Correct. There's always going to be people coming to your party if you're AB, you're RS, you know? Of course, they'll come. But when the party's over, the people who have to pick up the, the pieces, those are your friends, right? When so. you're down, taking care of you. And when I was in LA, I really... I moved to LA. Nobody knows me in LA. Of course, it's a, a city of, full with stars who are stars where they come from and nobody's in LA because they're not American, they're not popular, they haven't been in a full feature film such as myself. But then the friends that I managed to have there and managed to build a relationship with, I feel like those friends are solid. Now, even now that I'm here and I have nothing to do with the U.S., I mean, I have an agent and a manager there, but I, we still keep in touch. We still keep the connection. Mm. And then those are the friends I want to share my joys, my highs and my lows, you know? And mm. then I realize, okay, maybe I've developed those friendships because these last three years I've been developing my consciousness. So friends are important. Mm. And uh, feeling, feeling down is you should be grateful for the times that you do get to experience lows. Correct. That's all. So on the lows, what's the worst moment so far in your life? I think it was definitely um, the moment where I realized that I had to decide what to do in terms of my career. Um, because the beginning of my life, I thought I was just going to be married off to someone that was also a lovely person, by the way. And uh, because my dad thought that was the best way for, you know, for me to graduate and just get married, settle down um, and work for the family. But I think when I, I was depressed in that role and that was really difficult because I didn't know how to get out of it and I didn't know what I could be. I never dreamt of being an actress. I just needed a job. And Alexandra, actually, she's here with me in Dubai. Um, she said, I think you're quite interesting and I think you're quite talented and you're comfortable in front of the camera as well. So, and you're funny, like, just try acting. I'm like, are you crazy? <laughs> like, I took political science back in school. I also didn't take entertainment as a serious thing mm. because I was surrounded by people who saw it as lesser than, you know. And then I think that was the lowest point because I lost everything. I mean, my parents didn't approve. Um, I lost kind of my identity, like, what am I as a Muslim woman at this age, not married and having said no to the person I was supposed to marry and then not having an income of my own, never had a paycheck of my own if it wasn't for my family. That was tough for me. Just like, oh my God, what am I going to do? I never had a job. I think that was the lowest point. And then also knowing that, you know, all my friends have been friends family friends and the Raleen that didn't have anything and did not it was not an extension of my family um you know was worthy enough for their friendship and realizing some people just was like oh my god you're gonna leave home you're gonna be what an actress like I don't know if we can be friends you know I mean of course they didn't say that but and then I saw the people that were my friends that were like, you have nowhere to live? Like, come stay with me. You want to be what? An actress? Okay, I'll find out who, who of my friends are producers. And that was cool to hear. Like, I didn't know this person valued me this much. I didn't know this person would be so open. And I didn't even take this person seriously growing up, you know. But yeah. some people are just like, oh my God, you said no. Oh my God, as a Muslim person. As a Muslim girl at the age of 27, you decide to start a new career in entertainment. Well, you know, astaghfirullah, <laughs> you know, that kind of, I'm like, what is this? It's quite, quite hard to accept myself as well. Um, and at 27, you never really think you could start a new career, right? I mean, I never thought I could, but hey, hmm. yeah. What are you afraid of? I think what I'm most afraid of is failure, actually. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hypothetical question. Okay. If I have an envelope with your date of death, would you open it? Yeah. Why? Yeah, I would just want to know. Why? I don't know, because I live my every day to the fullest, but it'd be nice to do some logistical stuff before that <laughs> happens. <laughs> yeah, like have a will. Okay, maybe speed things up a little bit. I'm pretty easygoing. Like every day I'm living my best life, but it's always like, I can do that later. But, but why add pressure then? I think pressure is if good for some people. If you're already having full days. Do you agree, Alex? Pressure is good for some people. I think pressure would be good for me. Okay. I really... What uh, about you? Would you? No. No. Well, nobody flipped it on me, but I wouldn't open it. I don't care. I mean, it's very... If it did really happen, I don't know. But if I had a choice, I would... I would like to know, yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the interesting thing is the results of this question is usually 50-50. Mm -hmm. People, I don't know what will the person answer. There are some questions that people are typical about, mm -hmm. but not this one. Um, I like your hypothetical questions. Yeah, Go we, on. We have one more. <laughs> um, your grandmother's name? Rosina. Rosina. You have a lot of R names in your family. Yeah, everyone's an R. Yeah. Okay. So Rosina in one word. Goddess, I think. Why would you say that? I don't know. I feel like she has been the most um, influential person in my life, for sure. The most nurturing, the most um, love giving, the most generous with her time, her energy, and the most thoughtful. Also, the most. Uh, I don't know, just, just like the most awesome person you've ever met, but in a chill Buddhist Zen energy. Yeah, I'd like to meet her then. Yeah, she's yeah. so awesome. And today I found myself in a shop that she used to buy things from me from in Dubai. Wow. And bought things for her and I was like, this is full circle. Because mm. when I was growing up, she used to go to this brand of shop and buy me this thing. And now I'm calling her and like, oh, I'm here. Would you like anything from the shop? She's like, when the hell in life are you shopping there? Mm. Um, this is so uh, this is so not important, but I thought, yeah, this that was nice. funny. She's awesome. I mean, she's 83 That's and nice. now she has a phone, an Oppo phone, because I'm the brand ambassador for Oppo. <laughs> she WhatsApps me. She asked me like, oh, I'm going to go to the next level of Candy Crush. Can you send me some, some, what did she say? Some, can you buy me this new app or can you upgrade my level? I'm like, what are you doing at 83? And she's so inquisitive and curious and so active. Like she would read newspapers, like when she's in Indonesia visiting me because she's Singaporean and she's inshallah coming for Ramadan to spend time with me. That's why I'm flying back. She'll like read an article and she'll say, this is what needs to get done in Indonesia or you need to speak to this person. And she would speak to me in a way that she, she believes that she, I, she has faith that I can talk to this person and actually meet this person and tell them this. Like you should talk to this minister and tell her this is not, you know, this is not done in the Indonesian forest. She should set up another fund or she should get these people who are doing this logging business to do this and that. Mm or have cross subsidy, I'm like, Grandma, you were a nurse. Can you, how did you develop this? And she's like, I was a nurse, but I, you know, I want to do things. And if I was famous, I would turn up that person and just be like, hey, this is what needs to get done. So like her pushing me and her mm. being her, the most her that she can be, really inspires me. And I just realized there is no age limit to thinking and opening your mind and influencing people around you she's she's influencing me and now that i have fame i get to influence other people so oh. education really does start from the home yeah absolutely and so that's why i think before we become parents we really need to know ourselves know our surroundings understand the world and understand what it means to give life to another human because mm. you know humans go through a lot of suffering but they could also do a lot of good 
So before you have a child, think like, can you raise them so that you would be proud of them in the future? Could you give them the tools to navigate in this life where they could thrive and also be good human beings and contribute? Mm. If you don't have time to raise a human like that, do not have them. You know, adopt people who are like from disadvantaged backgrounds, who are less fortunate with less. That's why I'm, I really think the adoption laws in Indonesia need to be fixed because a lot of people want to adopt, but they can't because the adoption laws are just not good. So mm. I'm always telling people, if you can't have a baby, of course, go through the whole fertility shebang of trying to have your own, but also consider the option. So there's a lot of beautiful lives out there that need to be saved, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and people don't understand. People are always like, this person is messed up. You're like, but I like the way that you see people. I mean, the first few questions, like, how did you grow up? How are your parents? Because how do they get messed up? Like, how are their parents? How is their grandparents? How so, are their relationships? It's the so thank infrastructure. You. It's the infrastructure of every yeah. person. Two more. <laughs> One is hypothetical. Okay. If um, we take your heart, yeah. Raleen's heart, and we place it in front of you, what would it tell you? What would it tell me? Eat more greens. <laughs> 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 Stop eating ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? It would be worried about your diet? Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, especially in Dubai. You definitely eat Honey a lot cake. Dubai. Chocolate, yeah. baklava, <laughs> lamb biryani, bring it. My heart is suffering. <laughs> okay. yeah. I mean, but on a serious note, my heart as in my, mm. my heart. Yeah. I think it would tell me to listen to it more. Mm. Yeah. Do you, I'm adding a question. Do you uh, cover your vulnerability by jokes? Maybe. Mm. I never thought about it. Maybe, I don't know. If somebody <laughs> asks you a really tricky question or a really personal question, would you dodge it by making it lighter? Maybe. Ask me but <laughs> I I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. I I usually try to answer to my best capacity. I hardly dodge things. I either say no or I answer it. Yeah, I'll let you think about this one. Last one. Okay. Um, Thank God. <laughs> this has been a torture just talking to you. <laughs> it's like a therapy session. Raleen in one word. Oh my God. Super califragilistic XPL and douches. <laughs> what word? One word. I know. What do you think, Alex? Don't cheat. <laughs> don't cheat. Don't cheat. What do you think? I don't know. I'm not there One to word. tell you. What do you feel? I don't know. If you had to bring yourself in one word. This is the hardest question. Just one word. I think fun. Okay. I'll yeah. take that one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. By the way, I think you kept moving far and far. <laughs> <laughs> She's just going. And I'm like, Ugh, I was I'm going back. to do this. How was that? No, that was good. It was like therapy.